There is some quantum computing news. Is it I, would, uh, a thing? I know, right? Um, so this is another one of those cases of something that happened back in April, and for some reason just now it's kind of starting to to make some waves. But um, as you can see, April 20th. Ooh, 420. Um, so quantum computers, just to lay the groundwork here, um, they have to work, operate at almost zero Kelvin. And for those that don't okay. know, and, and Tim, you that's may cool. know better than me, but that's like negative 273, I believe, Celsius. Celsius that sounds right. Something Some, like that. Something it's, like that. Super yeah. cold. Yeah. That's that's where that's that's where uh, literally nothing moves anymore <laughs> because there's no energy left. Um, so anyway, that's what quantum computers basically have to work at because um, uh, because the the qubits they work. Okay, so Rob in Discord is telling me negative 273.15 degrees. Nailed it. Oh, ah, man. look at me. I was off way by off. 0.15. Way off. Actually, mm-hmm. 1.5, 15 times. Wow, there's a, lot of, that's, there's a weird number thing happening here. You'll see. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, the deal is because the qubits can flip into superposition and whatnot, they have to keep the states steady so that they can measure and the blah, blah, blah. It all gets pretty complicated. So in order to do that, they have to keep it around uh, pretty much zero degrees Kelvin. So uh, the problem with that is it takes literally millions of dollars to make a computer operate at that temperature, to keep it at that temperature. Um, well, the breakthrough happened in April where they were able to make it 15 times warmer than before. Hmm. But what that means is it's it's now at 1.5 degrees Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Zero times 15 does not equal 1.5. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, that must have been at 0.1 <laughs> Kelvin, so, right? For those Imperials, that's negative 456.97 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Uh, sounds like yeah. Iowa in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, hey. this article is from Singularity <laughs> Hub. There's other ones. Uh, Seeker actually just did a video about this the other day. But um, it's it's it doesn't sound significant to us, but in the quantum world, like that's that's a huge difference and in fact it it takes the the cost of running it from millions of degree uh, millions of dollars to like thousands of dollars mm. so um cool. it says it says right here reaching these temperatures requires incredibly powerful oh that's from the other one but this one can be done uh, achieved using just a few thousand dollars worth of refrigeration wow so about the cost of a regular mac um oh oh <laughs> so um oh. This is still like a, an incremental change. Um, they've only been able to do this with a punch. Is that guy ready to like punch some? I know he's about he's about to punch some cubits. It's wow. a five point finger death punch right there. <laughs> <laughs> I what hate a, I hate quibits. That is funny. Um. Anyway, so they've only been able to do it with two cubits so far. Um. The the largest. Um. Okay, there's two different types of quantum computers, and I'm totally blanking on what they are now. One one of them uh, is what the uh, D-Wave people were doing, and it has like 5,000 qubits, but it's a different type of computing. Um, the pure quantum stuff that they're doing here, the biggest one I believe was Google's bristlecone chip, which was 72 qubits. And they've only been able to get it at this temperature uh, for like two qubits. And they're doing the, here's a, here's another part about it is they're using um, a silicon system, which I guess in the past they were using something different, but because they have such a silicon infrastructure with uh, with computing so far already that they might be able to integrate classical computing with quantum computing, oh. and and it's also a lot cheaper. And you know we go to render that video it. and it's just like dink done. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. I wonder well, if this kind is of high how level we discover, stuff. But... If, I wonder if this is how we discover time travel. Honestly, probably. <laughs> we're doing a thing, and all of a sudden, we're like, "Wait, didn't that just happen?" And you're like, "Wait, no. Wait, did I just travel?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I know. I think it'll be something where, like, I honestly think quantum computing, and, and once we really, really ramp it up and scale it up and utilize it and exploit it to its full, like, I think that's when we will solve a lot of like major mathematical and physical you know equations and things that unlock a lot of mysteries of our universe just because we haven't ever been able to run all that stuff and all of a sudden one day we're just like 
how does everything work? Enter. And then just like, <laughs> here's how Four, everything works. 42. <laughs> 42. Um, I just did a little Google search for you guys. <laughs> wow. Uh, Good job. So this is interesting. Tim, what is the Kelvin temperature in space? Uh, it's darn near zero. It's, it's, it's mm, like. Up, go up. 22. <laughs> No, 2.7 Kelvin, it says. That's darn near zero. But it's a far cry from 1.5 even, right? That's true. But it would be neat if you could, I mean, that would be, maybe that's the path they're going down, but imagine, I mean, I don't know how big this machinery is, but if you could get it to operate at, let's say, above 2.7 Kelvin, in theory, you could kind of like put one of these in space and save all that money on the refrigeration mm-hmm. and then you know, beam down whatever, you know, the, yeah, back and forth, put it in now geostationary that's super high or yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. So, or I don't know when you're in space, is it now high or far? I don't know, but, uh, yeah, (laughs) not low earth orbit is where it would have to be. Right. But that'd be kind of, that'd be kind of an interesting, uh, result. And then all of a sudden earth just blinks back Mm -hmm. randomly to, you know, the dinosaur age. So whoops. (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, I haven't covered quantum computing in a while, but it's it's a really interesting topic. Um, there's there's some things that it's really, really good for and some things that it's right. you know, about the same as what we've already got. Or, or we have supercomputers now that can handle it better. But but yeah, there, there's certain uh, some uh, type of processing that it can do that like it would take a classical supercomputer like a thousand years to do. This can do yeah. it in like 10 seconds. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.